<laughs> this, this is the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. I'm Stephen A. First order of business is what took place in the nation's capital last night. Washington Wizards pretty much romped the Boston Celtics last night, led by 24 points from John Wall, about 19 from Otto Porter, neutralizing Isaiah Thomas, fresh off a 53-game performance in Game 2. He was limited to 13 in Game 3 on just eight shots. Scott Brooks, coach of the Washington Wizards, got the ball out of his hands. They trapped him. They doubled him. Sometimes, damn it, they tripled him. But more importantly, on the defensive end of the floor, while Isaiah Thomas was playing defense, they attacked him. They didn't let him hide on a weak side corner defending some immovable object that Scott Brooks planted in the corner that served no threat whatsoever. Instead, what they did was whoever Isaiah Thomas was defending, they attacked him because at 5'9", he could do a lot of things. But guard taller dudes from shooting over him, that's pretty impossible. And the Wizards showed that last night and took advantage of him. If he was on John Wall, John Wall was taking shots. If he was on Bradley Beal, Bradley Beal was taking shots. If he was on Otto Porter, Otto Porter was taking shots. A couple of times he ended up on Bogdanovich. He took shots. That's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to attack him and do what you have to do. Now the Wizards have an opportunity this Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, to go after John, uh, Isaiah Thomas again and notch this series 2-2. I suspect Boston will be better suited. For this confrontation, I still believe the Wizards will win this game. They will notch the series at 2-2, and then we go to a best-of-three format between Boston and Washington as the series continues to wane. 866-729-ESPN, that's 866-729-3776. But that was not the story that came, that, that really resonated last night. It was the fact that Kelly Oubre Jr., rookie out of Kansas, Got his head snapped back by Cole, Kelly o- Olenek for the Boston, or Olenek, whatever way you want to pronounce it, for the Boston Celtics. Let me tell y'all something right now. He jumps up and shoves the living hell out of Cole, uh, Kelly Olenek. Let me tell you something right now. Did Kelly Oubre deserve to be ejected immediately? You're damn right he did. What a stupid play on the part of this young rookie. You know why? Because it was a totally legal pick. There was nothing illegal about what happened. Absolutely, positively nothing. It was a hard pick, similar to what happened against Oklahoma City with Houston when Patrick Beverly got his head snapped back and he got knocked to the ground. See, ladies and gentlemen, in the game of basketball, your teammate who's defending the individual setting the pick is supposed to alert you that the pick is coming, that it's there. That way you're prepared and you don't sit up there and get body snatched and get your head snapped back. But Mahinemi didn't do that for the Washington Wizards. Instead, he allowed Kelly Oubre Jr. to run right into the pick. He got his head snapped back. A few plays earlier, he had had a hard foul or a hard pick placed on him. And as a result, he got up and he lost it. You don't do that particularly in playoff action, you know why? Because you're going to get ejected. And with the Wizards' suspect bench, that was the last thing he needed to do. It didn't matter because they had it. They already had about a 25-point lead. They weren't going to lose it on this particular day, and the Wizards were fine. Here's the problem. Here is the problem. You have an individual, the czar of the NBA, in attendance. And he's the one that's going to decide whether or not Kelly Oubre is suspended for game four of this series tomorrow night. And chances are Kelly Oubre is going to get suspended. Now, be clear. I do not believe he deserves to be suspended. And the reason why I don't believe he deserves to be suspended, ladies and gentlemen, is because he did not throw a punch. He shoved and Kelly Olenek flopped big time. He didn't get knocked to the ground by Kelly Oubre the way it appeared. He clearly flopped. I mean, he flopped so much, it warrants a fine in and of itself for flopping. 
Remember how they instituted that rule a couple of years ago that if you you flop that way and you try to embellish too much, you're making a concerted effort to deceive the officials and we shouldn't have that in our game, according to former Commissioner David Stern before Adam Silver took over? That's exactly what Kelly Olenek did. So the fact that Oubre did not throw a punch and Kelly Olenek flopped, to me, warrants a stiff fine. Since the ejection had already taken place, it warrants a stiff fine. Don't let it happen again and move on. No punches were thrown. I say let it go. Let them play. No excuses. See, that's the problem that I have with the NBA league office. They leave too much room for excuses. I don't want any excuses. I don't want dudes getting suspended, shifting the momentums of series, and all of that other stuff. I don't give a damn that the Cleveland Cavaliers stand here today as the reigning defending champions, and I know they deserve it because LeBron James is the greatest player in the world. But the fact of the matter is, if Draymond Green had not gotten suspended, For game five, the likelihood is that the Golden State Warriors are standing here today as the reigning two-time defending NBA champions. And oh, by the way, Kevin Durant wouldn't have gone to Golden State. Because that really would have been him riding the gravy train. He probably wouldn't have gone. But the fact that they lost made it easier for him to go. So when you look at the NBA, you kind of screwed yourself. Because on one hand, You wanted to make sure that LeBron James could play as long as he possibly could because that's good for all of us, to be quite honest with you. But on the flip side, you also want players to stay, stars to stay with their teams, particularly in small marketplaces. And had Golden State won, Kevin Durant may have never gone to Golden State. So these are all things to consider. These are all things that you can't ignore. And even though it's on a much lesser scale because Kelly Oubre is not Kevin Durant, we don't want anybody suspended if we can avoid it. Wasn't a fight that broke out. Kelly Olenek just got shoved to the ground, and he flopped along the way. Move on. I don't think the NBA will. I think they'll suspend Oubre. But I'm hopeful I'm wrong. I really, really am. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. One of the other things I wanted to get into was weed in the National Football League. Because it's bad enough, Mr. Jerry Jones himself has called for marijuana use to be eradicated from the league's drug policy. Clearly, to some degree, he don't want his players suffering because Lord knows there's plenty of Dallas Cowboys that can't stay off the weed. But now Stephen Jones, his son, the executive VP for the franchise, has gotten himself involved in the situation. Talking about we don't need to be doing it. Then it doesn't need to be a part of the policy. So clearly they're at odds with the commissioner, Roger Goodell. Here's my position. Do you really, really believe that these players, using weed as much as they do, possibly willing to come to a game high if they could get away with it. You really, really think that's good for the National Football League? I don't. If you can't discipline yourself, I mean, God, I mean, listen, you know when the, you know when the tests are coming. If you can't discipline yourself enough to avoid getting millions snatched out of your pocket or at least hundreds of thousands of dollars because you can't stay off the weed, I don't have any sympathy for you. None. Absolutely none. I saw with Roger Goodell on this. Not for medicinal purposes, because I think that should be allowed. But if it ain't for medicinal purposes, prescribed by a doctor, I am not a proponent of marijuana use by NFL players for recreational purposes. I don't give a damn that seven states have already approved it. That ain't good enough. NFL is a private industry. They have a right to mandate what they mandate. Weed is legal in seven states, I'm sure. But I bet you, I, I bet you my paycheck, every corporation within those cities who legalize marijuana use doesn't condone it. They have a right not to. And I support that right. 
You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. As you all can tell every day on First Take, I'm obviously the most knowledgeable. I'm obviously the smartest. You know, I I, I even have a slightly better vocabulary. <laughs> obviously, I'm lying. But I got my next guest on the line that I defer to specifically when it comes to boxing. Former radio host on 98.7 FM in New York. Former radio host on 710 ESPN LA. My partner in crime every weekday on First Take on ESPN. The man calling the fight tomorrow night with Jim Lampley and Roy Jones Jr. I'm talking about Canelo Alvarez versus Julio Cesar Chavez. The one and only Max Kellerman. Big boy, what's going on, man? How you doing? <laughs> what's going on, brother? I heard uh, you wanted me on. So I slipped out of the fighter meetings. I ducked out a little bit early from one, and I'm going to come in a little bit late to the next, and I'll catch up from Jim Lampley's notes. I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you very, very much. I won't keep you long. I want to know, for all of us out here, obviously this is a mega fight. Max, why is this fight so mega? Well, first of all, the economic engine of boxing, you could even argue worldwide the number one economic engine, um, is is Mexico. Mexican boxing is culturally such an overwhelming force. It drives so much of the economy of North American boxing. Mm. And here we have a matchup for the hearts of Mexican fight fans between the last biggest star out of Mexico and the current biggest star out of Mexico um, with all the marbles on the line in terms of these guys' careers at the moment. It's just, it's a, it, it, and it, there's no way it's not a great action fight. Given their styles, Chavez wants you to stay right there so he can come to you. And, and Canelo wants you to come to him so he can counter. And that's what's going to happen. Is Canelo Alvarez the biggest boxer and in, in, in the biggest fighter in the world right now? You know, I think Anthony Joshua just took it. I think mm-hmm. the way he knocked out Klitschko with a heavyweight title on the line, 90,000 people at Wembley. Um, in North America, it's Canelo. But worldwide, I think that this moment, it's got to be Anthony Joshua. How much? Champ. How much should we be clamoring for Canelo versus Triple G, and how much would a performance against Julio Cesar Chavez facilitate that happening? Well, here's the question, too. David Lemieux, who had that great knockout of Curtis Stevens, remember that yeah. left hook? Yes, I know I you did. were watching that. He was asleep. Has he awakened yet? <laughs> has he awakened yet? Has he awakened yet, Max? Has he awakened yet, Curtis Stevens? <laughs> Exactly. So Lemieux is on the undercard against an overmatched opponent. And so the thinking of some is that Golden Boy is looking to slip him in against Canelo should Canelo beat Chavez. Look, you, the way Triple G looked maybe a half step slow against Danny Jacobs, take nothing away from Jacobs. He not only had the size, but the boxing skill, punching power, speed, IQ, determination, the whole thing, preparation to give Triple G a very tough, close fight. But some are saying, OK, look, he's 35 now. Maybe he's getting a little, maybe he's, he's not only ripening on the vine, maybe he's rotting a little bit. And as Sugar Ray Leonard did to Marvin Hagler, let him get a little older, a little older, a little slower, then I'll fight him. And people are thinking, not Canelo, Canelo doesn't duck anyone, but maybe Golden Boy with a lot of brain power over there, Oscar De La Hoya, Bernard Hopkins, they know what they're looking at. Maybe Golden Boy thought, you know what, let's let Triple G just rot on the vine a little bit. Mm. We're talking to Max Kellerman right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Julio Cesar Chavez, I'm not sold on this guy because, number one, he wants to take punches. I think that's unwise against Canelo. Number two, he's not somebody who's respected the sport enough as it pertains to his conditioning. Even his daddy says that about him. How does he look for this fight in your estimation? Does he look ready? I I just saw a picture of him. from One of the guys in his camp showed me a picture of him. He, He looks in the best shape I've ever seen him. So, so he's trying to give himself the best chance to win. The question is, because he has lost by stoppage, is it a little easier for him to go to that place now with, you know, when the going gets tough? Mm. Um, and because he hasn't been active and he's in against a guy with a tremendous amount of pride who has been active, the going will get tough, you would assume. So you know what happens then? And that's going to be interesting to see Chavez Jr., not only his physical preparation, but how mentally and emotionally prepared he is because – as you know, Stephen A., as the great fight observer that you are, there, there are levels to this. Some guys mm. think they want it, and other guys take it to a different level. And is Chavez willing to get to that level? Last question. What are your thoughts about Mayweather and McGregor and whether or not you think that will happen? Because there's so much stuff in the news as to whether or not it will or will not. What are your thoughts? 
I think they're still negotiating. And I think there's so much money on the table, and it's it, there's no risk for either fighter. McGregor loses, of course. I'm not a boxer. Floyd loses. Uh, excuse me. Floyd can't lose. So what does Floyd have to lose? Right? <laughs> and, they're, and, they're, and he's going to make over $100 million, Too much money for anyone to turn it down. I think it's going to happen. Max, always appreciate you, man. Get back to your meetings, man. I'll be watching the fight tomorrow night, buddy. I really appreciate it. Thank you, brother. No problem. The one and only Max Kellerman. Right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Does a great job. He really, really is. I mean, if you're going to succeed Larry Merchant, you succeed him with Max Kellerman. No question about it. I can't wait for tomorrow night's fight. I got Canelo by knockout. I got Canelo by knockout. Because I think Julio Cesar Chavez, I don't think you can fluctuate taking care of yourself and then not taking care of yourself. You got to be committed to beat the likes of a Canelo Alvarez. Floyd took him to school, gave him a boxing lesson. Didn't knock him out, but gave him a box of lessons. Got him scared to throw punches. But guess what? Outside of that, the man hasn't lost. Okay? Saw what he did to James Kirkland. Put him to sleep. Saw what he did. I mean, listen to Amir Khan. Amir Khan had no business in that ring with Canelo Alvarez. Had no business in that ring. You knew he was going to get put to sleep the second he got hit. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. He had glass jaws against dudes lighter than him in the past. At junior welterweight, hell, he's going to take a punch from Canelo Alvarez. I want to see Alvarez versus Triple G. And I believe that Triple G has looked suspect for the most part because he's having a tough time getting fights. And it's hard for him to be active. That's what I believe. But again, we can't assume. We got to see what happens. Time will tell. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Let's go to Lenny in North Carolina. You're live with Stephen A. What's going on, big time? Haven't heard from you in a while. How you doing? Hey, what's going on, Stephen A.? It's been a while. I hadn't talked to you in a minute. But ahead, uh, how's mama doing? She's hanging tough, man. I appreciate you asking. Thank you. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. Uh, well, first off, I have three things real quick. Please stop singing. That's number one. Because <laughs> you are terrible when you sing. Yes, I but am. Number two, On purpose. <laughs> but number two, do you think um, my man uh, Ubre will get suspended because the ref was there I and he, he kind of bumped into I, the ref? I, 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 do you no, think, I don't he think get suspended for that? I don't think. I don't think it's because I don't think it's because of the ref. Honestly speaking, I really, really do not think that it was that it was because of the ref. I think that uh, uh, Olenek did a, did a fa- fabulous job uh, of flopping. And remember, Kiki Vandeweight is the disciplinary czar of the National Basketball Association. He was in attendance. So seeing it unfold, seeing the crowd reaction, seeing dudes, you know, run on the court, run over to the incident, understanding that the reaction could have resulted in a melee, things of that nature, as much as I disagree with it, I think Kiki Vandeweghe is probably going to suspend him for a game. I hope it doesn't happen, but I wouldn't bet my money against it. Well, well, when the young brother jumped up, when he jumped up, he jumped up. His fists were balled. I was watching it. Yeah, but he didn't throw a punch. He but he won. didn't throw a punch. He, he throw never a threw a punch. punch. You're exactly right. right. But he he jumped up, and he was ready to go. And when the ref got into the middle of it, that's what made me think he might get a suspension. That's the only thing. Because you're right, Kelly Olynyk went down like he went down like um, a sack of potatoes. But yep. I thought when he, because he jumped up and his fists are bald. Well, that's not you're, not you're go. not going to go by that because your fist could be bald, but you can't get around the fact that he never threw a punch. He shoved. That's, that, he that's shoved. true. Number two, let me get this real quick. I got say uh, Chavez Jr. winning this night or really? tomorrow night. Because if he follows the jab, if he shoots his jab and follows in behind it, he can now, catch. I'm, now, Lenny, how many uh, times are you going to be? How many times you going to be wrong no. with me? How many times you going to be wrong with me? Every time you call See, him, I've been right with you, bro. N- no, nah, like, I don't know for, that. Except, except for the Knicks, I, I, yeah, I was wrong with the Knicks, mm-hmm. but I've been right with you for pretty much. Hold, most it, hold of it, didn't we have a disagreement on a fight and I won? No, you, you lost sure? on that one, bro. Who? Which you fight? Lost Which on that fight? One. Which fight? What have I been wrong it about was, a fight? It was, it was a, um, oh my goodness, it was a triple G fight. No, it was a triple G. No, 
I said he was going to win the fight. fight. We had a disagreement. I said he was going to win the fight by decision, man, and he did. Yes, I, I, I agreed with you. Okay. I okay. agree with you on that, but All no, right. actually I didn't because I said he was going to knock him out. Okay. But Trevor right. G didn't knock him out. That's true. I got you. I appreciate the call, though. Thanks All a lot. Right. Love you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Brandon and Cali, you're live with Stephen A. What's going on, Brandon? How are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm all right. Go ahead. All right. Basically, I just wanted to uh, speak upon the uh, marijuana situation in the NFL. Go ahead, man. And basically, um, I think that, you know, they should allow the players to use marijuana for medicinal purposes, not okay. recreational purposes. Okay. Not just because I want to smoke just to get high and, 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 you know, be social, but more of, well, let's see if this is going to help me with my, you know, with my pain and, and other, well, whatever the situation is. Okay. I think hey, man, should, hey, hey, Brandon, know, Brandon, Brandon, you'll appreciate me having to cut you off here. I got to cut you off because I got Floyd Money Mayweather on the line right now. The money man himself has called into the Stephen A. Smith Show. What's going on, Big Tom? How are you? What's up, Stephen A.? Talk How you doing? Me. Listen, listen. I, well, first of all, I got to ask you this question. Who you got winning tomorrow night's fight? I got to hear. I mean, I'm talking to a man that's 49-0, and 0, undefeated. You understand? The, the money team himself, the man for the money team. Oh, who do you have, Canelo or Julio Cesar Chavez, tomorrow night? I think that I lean towards Canelo probably in the late rounds. Knockout in the late rounds. Canelo has more experience at big fights. But Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., you know, he comes from a fighting family. He has a lot of a lot of fights under his belt, but not as much experience as Canelo. Canelo has a lot of experience as far as being in big fights with myself, with Lara, with with also Miguel Cotto. So, you know, Miguel Cotto has a lot of experience fighting Shane Mosley, so we'll just see how how it plays out. But I'm leaning towards Canelo, late round knockout. How big should this fight be viewed by us in our eyes? Does this qualify as a big fight? It certainly doesn't qualify as being as big as you when you fought Canelo Alvarez. But but how big should a fight like this be viewed? What do you think it could do for boxing, Floyd? I, I think it's huge for the Hispanics. You know, for the Hispanics, it's very, very huge. But for, but for, it's good for boxing. Just period, it's good for boxing. But you know, I know the ultimate goal is what everybody want want to see. They want to see Canelo and Triple G, and it takes time to build a fight of that magnitude. But this is a very interesting matchup because I believe tomorrow that Julio Cesar Chavez is the bigger man tomorrow, as far as you know, in size and in weight. But Canelo has, uh, you know, a lot more experience. What about Julio Cesar Chavez coming to a catch weight of 164? Do you think that's going to help or hurt him? Well, you know, this guy comes from, he started off at 135, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. You know, I can remember when Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. used to fight on my undercard. So he comes from a small weight, no different from Canelo, worked his way up. You know, constantly put on weight like myself. You know, I started off at 130 and I moved up. Um, I don't know if it's going to help him or hurt him. We'll just see tomorrow Tomorrow, and see how things go. Floyd Money Mayweather right here with Stephen A. on the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio. You've been in the news lately myself. Through no, I don't know if it's through any fault of your own, but we're hearing that, you know, we heard from Oscar De La Hoya. He had comments about how he doesn't think the fight between you and UFC champion Conor McGregor will ever happen because there are too many egos involved, et cetera. Uh-huh. Could, you, could you break it down for us? What's going on? Are we ever going to see this fight? What's the holdup? Floyd Money Mayweather. Well, only thing I can do is have patience, like I did before. You know, no one thought the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight would happen, but I had patience. So we must have patience, take our time, and just wait. You know, um, do I believe the fight is going to happen? I really don't know as of right now. But me and my side, me, Al Heyman, Mayweather Promotions, we're ready to go. So as soon as they say uh, they sign on a dotted line, then it's time to go to training camp. 
Do, when you say you're ready to go, what does that mean? Because we've heard the same thing from Conor McGregor. So what's the holdup? Ready, well, ready to go for me is they say, Floyd, he signed. And then that's when I can go back to doing my road work, going back to chopping trees, going back to the boxing gym, you know, getting in my zone. And what's the holdup, you know, from what I was told, Conor McGregor has a baby that's due in May with his wife. He has a baby that's due. So after the baby is due, then we'll go from there. It's not one of those situations where he feels like, you know, he deserves more money and he's not getting offered as much money as he deserves because that's certainly the kind of indication that he's given in the past. You have to work your way to become the A side. Now, like I said before, in the UFC, he is the A side. But this is, you know, this is Mayweather Promotions and, and coming together with UFC and we're working together, you know. And the reason why we're the A side because of the numbers. We look at the numbers um, as far as our pay per view numbers, we look at his pay per view numbers, and our pay per view numbers. Uh, there's no comparison. There's no comparing at all. And far as uh, guaranteed purses, you know, his largest guarantee from what I was told was only, you know, uh, $3 million or no more than $5 million. And by the way, I'm glad you brought that up because Lord knows you made over $200 million, uh, probably more than that, fighting with, with the Pacquiao fight alone. Uh, so there's no doubt about that. But educate my, my listeners about this, Floyd, because you've told me about this in the past. You talked about mm-hmm. how you were not always the A-team, that you had to no, wait I was your all, turn. I was, Talk that, tell that story about you and Oscar okay. De La Hoya. Tell that story. No, it was not just me and Oscar. I wasn't, I was, I wasn't always the A-side. You know, um, it's been, a, you know, it's been times where I was the A-side, but then when I faced certain opponents, I had to take a step back. You know, I even had to take a pay cut before. You know, when I fought Arturo Gotti, I can remember when Top Rank, you know, uh, brought me a contract. I signed the contract. Then weeks later, right before the fight, they, the contract switched up, and the, the contract was short, you know, it was it was short by a couple million by a couple million. Um, did I get upset? I didn't cry. I didn't complain. Um, I went to Arturo Gotti turf. His turf was Atlantic City. I went to his uh, to his turf um, and fought him on his turf. He was he was considered the A side, even though I feel like my name was a lot bigger. I thought my name was a lot bigger, uh, but that didn't matter. They said if you're trying to get to a certain point. You have to you have to make certain sacrifices with the Oscar De La Hoy situation. Um, Oscar De La Hoy, he chose the weight. He chose what he chose the city he wanted to fight in. He even chose my gloves, and that's never been done before. He chose my gloves for me. Mm. So only thing I can do is say, listen, I feel I'm the best. I want to work my way to become the A side and never be the B side again. So what I'm what I'm going to continue to do is beat every fighter, or you know every fighter that's competing, that's the A-side. I want to beat them so I can be the A-side and no longer be the B-side. Floyd Money Mayweather right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Interesting question for you before I let you get on out of here. Just a couple more. You know, Oh, we're, you, you know, we're on the Stephen A. Smith. We, we can ask questions all day. This is Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> well, I, well, I appreciate that, bro. Thank you so much. Let me tell you this much real quick, though. I'm looking at Errol Spence Jr., I know how much yeah. love you have for him. He's fighting against Kell Brooks. I'm looking at Keith Thurman. I'm looking at some of these cats on the come up. I know you're willing to come out of retirement to fight up with Conor McGregor. What about anybody in the welterweight or the junior middleweight division? This right, it's, this fight with Conor McGregor makes this makes business sense. This makes business sense. This is this is something that's in high demand. I think Keith Thurman. You know, I want to say congratulations to Keith Thurman, Kell Brook, uh, Errol Spence, Danny Garcia, all those guys that said Walter Waite, you know, I want to see those guys come together so they can fight one another. You know, like I said, um, there's only one guy that's on my radar, and that's Conor McGregor. Mm. Um, I'm 40 years old now. I gave the sport uh, 19, 20, 21 years. 
of hard work and dedication. And it's crazy, you know, even like with the fans. When I was Pretty Boy Floyd early on in my career, for the first 10 years, all I did was knock guys out. You know, and once my body broke down, once my, you know, my hands broke down, yep. my body wasn't wasn't the same. I still had to, you know, dig into my bag of tricks and still find ways to win, even though I wasn't getting the knockouts later on in my career. They said, oh, Floyd, because in the beginning of my career, when I was knocking everybody out, they said, this kid, he's knocking everybody out, but he can't go the distance. Once I started going the distance, when my body broke down, they said, well, he's not a knockout artist. So, you know, a lot of times with people, you can never win. But my thing was to always go out there and win no matter how. No matter mm-hmm. how you win, as long as you win. Listen, before I let you get on out of here, let me transition to basketball. I watched your man Isaiah Thomas. He struggled last night. They limited his shooting. But he dropped 53 the night before. And I know how tight you guys are. What was it like for you to watch your man Isaiah Thomas of the Boston Celtics perform like that real quick, Floyd? Well, we communicated. We talked yesterday. We just talked about our friendship. You know, and what I talked to him about is this. I said, Isaiah, you will all you will always be my friend, you know, uh, through your good games, through your bad games. But we must remain friends. And we must always stay we must always stay grounded. I said, even though I came into the sport of boxing and made eight hundred million, I'm still grounded. I said, you know, um and that's what I told him, stay grounded, stay focused, and be the leader that you are. And you have to be the voice of your team. You can't just go out there. If you cannot get the job done and they're doubling and tripling you, then you get your team into it. You get the rest of the guys that's around you into the game. And you and you force them to play harder. Because if not, if they get to slacking, because they have to pick up where you're slacking at. And, I mean, you know, he's going, he's still going through, mentally going through a lot. Even though he scored 53 one game and he yep. come back and scored 13, he's mentally going through a lot with his sister. Yep. You know, I spoke to him some days. He'd be like, Floyd, I'm down. And I say, you know, certain situations make us stronger. So I'm, I'm always trying to encourage him and give him positive advice. Yeah. If it's not, if it's nothing positive, like I told him, if there's nothing positive I have to say to you, then I'm not going to say it at all. You win some, you lose some, but every time you go out there, you give it 100%. Floyd, appreciate you, my man. Thanks so much for calling into the show, and I'll see you well, soon. Stephen, Stephen A., I want to say thank you. And everybody that's listening to the Stephen A. Smith show, tell 100 more people to tune in <laughs> every morning, listen to the Stephen A. Smith show. Because I know on the East Coast, it's not morning time, but on the West Coast, it's morning time. You, you have my support. The, you have the, the money team supports you, Stephen A. You're the best at what you do. Keep up the great work. And I got, uh, we all we all, we all going to stand behind you and support you. I appreciate you, man. A, the Stephen A. Smith Show, the best station in the nation. Thanks a lot, bro. I appreciate it. We got to go right. to a hard commercial break, man. Thank you so much. We'll wrap soon. Appreciate you calling in. Thanks a lot. The one and only Floyd Money Mayweather. Right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. I didn't know he was going to call him, but I'm damn happy that he did. You heard what he had to say. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.